Hello there, my name is Fred. I'm an actuary intern in Pandana Life. As an intern, I learned a lot of new things about actuarial science, life insurance, risk management, and other stuff. Although I'm just a sophomore in NU, I'm ready to grasp some insights about actuarial life. Now, I got a task to evaluate some research from insurance products. I never learned this thing before. Heck, I never learned a thing about accounting before. All I think is calculus and statistics. So I did some research and asked one of my colleagues and I know about net premium valuation and gross premium valuation. But what really are they? I don't really know about it and I got a midnight deadline. So let's go and find out about NPV and GPV. Meanwhile, my manager gives me a pretty hard test. I have no experience on evaluating research before. I know about this NPV GPV thing, but really what are they? Is it just about buckets and some disgusting things? I have no idea at all. Hey, am I being called? Surely someone didn't know about us quite well yet. Huh? What is this sorcery? Did you guys appear to answer my question? Well, I think we should introduce ourselves first. Hello, I'm NPV. Net Premium Valuation Reserve is a method of computing reserves that doesn't make explicit provision for the insurer's product-related expenses or loading. Hi, I'm Gross Premium Valuation Reserve. You can call me GPV. I'm a method of computing reserves that makes explicit provision for the insurer's product-related expenses or loading. Okay, now can you guys tell me more about each of you so I can make better decision today? That's why we're here! NPV reserves is the present value of future contractual liabilities subtracted by present value of future net premiums, where net premium is a premium that provides contractual benefits at policy commencement under valuation basis, payable under the same condition as office premium. Only mortality and interest are explicitly allowed under NPV. This method also needs additional adjustments, and assets are typically valued at book. GPV reserves is the present value of all future liabilities which include expenses and discretionary benefits, subtracted by the present value of future office premiums. Each parameter requires an explicit assumption under the GPV method. Also, assets are typically valued at market and discount rates are typically derived from market observable yields, market consistent. Okay, now I got a little hang of it. But how can I construct a basis using NPV or GPV methods? So basically, you just need to count the present value of the possible benefit that needs to be given according to the policy, and you balance it with the amount of premium the policyholder will pay during the policy term, which is an annuity. With premium under the equivalence principle, you can count the difference between the possible benefit and premiums, and the difference can be counted as the reserves for the company. I am similar in principle with NPV, but my difference is I also include the expenses, such as initial expenses, maintenance expenses, and settlement expenses. Those are the things that I count. And because it increases the spending, it affects the premiums paid by the policyholder. Well, I finally know a lot more about you guys, but can you make it easier by telling me your advantages? I have several advantages. I am easy to compute since my formula is driven with only two parameters. Also, my results are less volatile. When using NPV method for conventional participating products, future bonuses would emerge gradually as surplus and not capitalized upfront. Reserves would be non-negative unless over Zilmer. Last but not least, surrender profits will only be recognized upon surrender. Wait a minute, what is this over Zilmer thing? I can't quite comprehend this overly technical terminology. Over Zilmer is when we add too much reserves due to the new business stream, so the money we have overcomes the amount of benefit and expenses that needed to be paid. Basically, over Zilmer happens when we do Zilmerization, a process that increases the reserves, therefore it is good for the condition of the company in general, just don't overuse it. Okay, now it's time to pill yourself, GPV. First of all, my method is easier to communicate to non-technical audience. All future cash flows can be modeled. Therefore, GPV method is objective, realistic, and explicit. Strength of basis also determine explicitly through strength of individual assumptions. GPV method capitalize the difference between pricing and valuation basis at policy inception as profit or loss. 
Moreover, I use a set of best estimate assumptions to calculate liabilities that would equal as probability of over and under reserving as a starting point. Reserving basis would be strengthened as well in order to increase efficiency level of reserves. Critical assumptions would be strengthened as an alternative to reach desired sufficient level of reserve. Actuarial judgment and extensive testing are also required to use GPP properly. Wow, it seems to me that both of you have varieties of advantages, but as nothing is perfect, what are your drawbacks and PV? Yes, sadly, I do have some drawbacks. Using NPV method, allowances would be implicit. Some people also view this method as not objective, as it is difficult to quantify sufficient levels of provision, despite overall prudence. This method will be difficult to communicate to non-technical audiences. I do have stable results, but this may not reflect underlying market conditions. NPV method is not tailored for sophisticated designs such as out-of-money options or financial reinsurance. What about GPV? What are your drawbacks? Yes, I also have some drawbacks. Using GPV method, research sensitive to change in basis as the change in reserving basis doesn't affect office premiums. Any asset liability mismatch would increase volatility of results. Market value of assets may fluctuate significantly and additional capital may be required to withstand volatility. The pricing process becomes more complicated as people need to form a view of future market prices. Companies may also need to increase the price to reflect the uncertainty. Negative reserves may arise during initial policy durations because of initial expense and profit loadings in office premium. I finally understand NPV and GPV. Well then, tell me your opinion guys, which method should we use?